Hi there, thanks for joining me for another video. Today I'm back in Project Cars 2. I know, why am I in Project Cars 2 when I've got Automobilista 2 to play with? Doesn't make any sense, right? But I'm here for a reason. Basically, a little while ago, I did a review on Jack Spade's force feedback files just to see um, if they improved the experience. And I found to some degree they did. They made it a lot more lively and kind of gave all the cars a bit more of a weighty feel. Um, now, somebody commented on that video and suggested that I try the Christian True or Christian Pure force feedback files. Um, so this is what this video is about. I'm going to take a Nissan R86 around Road America for a couple of laps and just see how these files feel in compared to compared to the Jack Spade ones. Now I'm not, you know, super technical about this stuff and ultimately I think force feedback is subjective. Um, so I, I've kind of done this sort of medium setup here and just middle of the road stuff. So I'm just gonna try to give you a vague feedback of how I feel that they are compared to the other ones. Anyway, enough talking, let's do it. Okay, so um, here I am in the Nissan. And one thing that I'm already noticing is, is that you can't just leave the steering wheel go. It's not doing it now, typically. Give it a little bit of a nudge, there you go, and it starts to oscillate. Uh, obviously, if you get it nice and still, then it stays put. Now, that might just be indicative of these files. I didn't notice it in the standard, with the standard files, or the standard custom force feedback setup, or with Jack Spade stuff, but it's here nonetheless with this. Anyway. Let's do. I don't care about the spit, the, the the pit speed limit here, because why should I? There's nothing else going on. <laughs> Let's just go fast. So already, I can tell you that this these these files feel a lot smoother than um, than uh, the Jack Speed ones do. There's found that there was a lot of kind of crunch with those ones um, for want of a better description I find there's a lot of canned road effects with project cars too anyway you get a lot of uh, you know jerkiness through the steering bit of a lock up there no mind we don't care about that I'm not driving properly by the way I'm just cocking about But yeah, I found that there's a lot of crunch with the other files. And likewise with the standard stuff, you kind of get this kind of canned road effects. But these are very smooth in comparison. I'm going to roll over some curbs and stuff in a minute and see what the, uh, the um, effect of that is. Now, of course, you can actually get rid of that notchiness to some degree by um, turning down the FX. Um, the, uh, the, I think it's the FX slider in the, in the force feedback settings and you can get rid of the, the crunchiness to some degree but it also removes it also removes the uh, the effect of the curbs go go magical grip from Project Cars 2 I should not have been able to take that corner like that so yeah there is a bit of detail on the curbs I'm just going to drive over this one there's quite a lot of rumble coming through there. It's not Automobilista 2 levels of detail, but it's still there. It's still pretty good. I love this track and I love this car. So the reason why I've chosen this car is because it's, in my opinion, one of the one of the cars that actually drives really well in Project Cars 2. Fucked that up, didn't I? I'm not very good at the old toe and heel. And I've chosen to drive this car fully manual rather than have an automatic clutch just because I want to get the full effect of the steering and how the car feels and how it handles. There's loads of detail then as I rolled over that strip back there. Onto the grass we go. Yeah, it's, good. it's quite good actually. Not bad at all. But one of the most notable things is, is that it feels a lot smoother. It's still quite heavy, as I would expect it to be in a Group C car. I would expect this car to 
be a real workout to drive in real life. And that's one of the unfortunate things I'm finding about force feedback is that it's got a pretty subjective nature. People tend to dial it into what they prefer. Wait, that was pretty good. Um, and I'm not... I wish it was, was more... I don't know, di dictated by the car that you're driving. Because, you know, if you were bombing around in your Ford Focus or something out in the real world, and um, it would just feel, well, like you're just driving a modern car with power steering and everything's all smooth and easy and everything like that. And then if you jump from that straight into a, like a Group C car, for example, you'd have a hell of a different experience. And there would be nothing that you could do about that. It's just that, that feeling is defined by the mechanical parameters of the car. Um, and it's a shame that, it, I suppose you're insinuating it is like that to some, some degree, but then you can fiddle around with force feedback forever and a day trying to get the, uh, the feeling that you like out of it or trying to uh, chase the realism aspect and ultimately I wouldn't know what this car feels like in real life I wouldn't know how to set this thing up to make it feel realistic but what I want is a good communicative experience from the steering to let the steering um, talk to me to let me know what the car is doing is it sliding, is it on a curb is it, am I understeering am I oversteering Am I cocking more my corners up like that? Because I'm not paying any attention. <laughs> Probably. But one thing I do find about these this uh, this force feedback setup is that it's got a lot of spring to it. So as I'm turning, there's there's a lot of resistance from the centre. So. I don't know if this makes any sense, but as, as I moved off the centre, I'm feeling like a, a springy kind of resistance rather than a heavy kind of resistance. So I can't really describe it any better than that. And it, it seems to want to spring back to centre a lot more readily than the Jack Spade files did. Now, whether or not that's a more realistic feeling or whether it's down to personal preference, I don't really know. But there is one thing that is apparent, apart from my lack of ability to change gear, um, um, is that this is actually a lot better feeling than than what it's like stock. Now I believe I have got my FX settings turned down quite low, um, which might account for some of the smoothness. But despite that, I can still feel a lot of detail through the curbs. So I've got the gain at 60 because it's set to about 50 on the actual wheelbase because that's where I like it for the other Sims. Um, volume is 65, so the, the tone is 50, but the FX is what I've got turned right down. Um, so usually this is up here around, around about 50, and this is what I'm finding gives all of the the notchiness so I'm going to put that up and we'll give it another go and see what see what that feels like so again it's still quite smooth it might just be this track mind I, I did when I did the uh, the run with the jack spade files I was going around a laser scan track I don't know if this one is I doubt if it is but quite frankly this still feels pretty smooth. I can't believe the amount of grip that's on this game. <laughs> but yeah, loads of detail through the curbs there. Let's just run, run over this one. Run a bit wide onto this curb. So there's quite a lot of information coming through there and it's it's nice because the uh, the actual grindiness that you usually feel isn't there at all. But as I said, there is just this weird spring to it, which I'm not sure if I like. But it's not bad. It's definitely an improvement over the standard, uh, standard files. That's 100% sure, 100% uh, 
um, sure that that is the case from my point of view anyway. Of course, if you just wanted more weight, then you just dial up the. Uh, oh, it's fuck that corner. You just dial up the uh, the gain a little bit more. Uh, sex day, so we're going to put the gain up to AE. AE for the gain volume. We'll leave all that there. Um, I used to run this at 100. I just you just don't need to with a direct drive wheel. There's so much power in them. Go. Uh, Accidentally whacked the shifter then trying to keep the steering wheel from flying off. Yeah, so that is evil. That's definitely something which the car didn't do before. It's just this horrid oscillation that you get when you're sitting still. Get on, car start. Complete disregard for hit speed restrictions. Remember tyres and brakes are stone cold so they won't work properly. Careful on this outlap. Ah, shut up Dave, no one cares what you think. So yeah, it's pretty much the same experience except the steering is a lot more, um, well heavy basically, there's a lot more resistance to it and it's got a bit more power to it when obviously stuff like that happens and uh, it starts to oversteer. But that's another thing I found about these files is the kick that you get from oversteer is a lot more violent. And that might be the case because, you know, that might be realistic. Couldn't tell you. Fastest car I've ever driven in real life, I think, is probably a BMW M3. And uh, that belonged to a friend of mine, so I wasn't hooning around in it. Certainly not inducing oversteer. My own BMW is no snail by any stretch of the imagination, and I, uh, I certainly don't drive that like this either. So I actually don't know really what it's like to be in a car like this and to have these kind of um, forces applied to you so I couldn't tell you whether this is realistic or not but what I can tell you is that these force feedback files are a definite improvement over the standard Project Cars 2 feel and I would go as far as to say that I, would, I prefer them to the Jack Spade files definitely whether you will don't know your mileage may vary all i can do is say try them both and see what you see what you like anyway i'm gonna leave the video there thank you very much for watching and i shall see you next time toodle bye let's have an accident <laughs>